From the beautiful hills of Kisoro, Rwanda Gardens of Irish Potatoes welcome those of us that are new to the area. Irish Potatoes are a common crop grown in the districts of Kabale, Kisoro and Rwanda in western Uganda. And as such, the crop was adopted as a staple food of the region. Globally, Irish Potatoes rank fourth largest food consumed following rice, wheat and maize. Mrs. Posi Tutiantunga is a respectable farmer from the region and narrates to Seeds of Gold the beauty of this crop. Then Waeza kutabira de rode tembi ole manze wali mebjina ole tembi wo ole mebjina ote mebi wo Nama wenda kutamu fataraiza ote mu fataraiza denu kavari ingo ujora shemu orati shubora tabebjina Nge distance tis tujiraga kujangu distance kuya ho turasiga ho gap Nge nukuruga hamo ndi kuza saidi ya watu kutora nko kumora ini Orasiga ho distance mgenu distance ka distance inche mgenu when planting Irish potatoes, you need to consider the following. Fertile soils with good water retention capacity, Irish potatoes require adequate soil moisture. Seed tubers must be free of diseases, especially bacterial wilt. Kukuji <laughs> Cage <laughs> Then <laughs> So orijo gua umurundi gua kavi rora tahi taka jeans. Ana dishwe kumurundi gua kavi chetu razombe mirundi. In Uganda, the different Irish potato varieties are Victoria, Kisoro, Kabale, Rutuku, and Nakpot. One, two, three, four, and five. Aliho shachi guangu me kwanka chetu rachia kuinga chini. Ziri ya tu ziri mesend. Awa antuzi nje barakunda kujia chini jini yebo niri. Kuteka inuzire kujia. Haa, <laughs> abulichi mwe chono. Kuteka kuchipsi oba kujia musafria yebo niri. Challenges are inevitable even for Irish potato growing. As you grow for the commercial market, you will need a large piece of land and hence will require more labor. For Mrs. Tuyantunga, she employs about 40 laborers on her 10-acre potato farm. 
ezu biri mu no kuhingo kashanga ziri kwa mwako kwa wale wa hine biti biri mjomiri ura hingo shanga mwako msiri guwe na guwe aruba juguwe na guwe ayumu so ezu nizo challenge ze njura ya guwa nyingi nji ziruomu so tube chwa afegu mazima tizi kuende njura nyingi nji kani tizi kuendo mshana mwingi hati zao ne njura nyingi nji odikuleba kubishire kubikurire mnongi so jine njura nyingi nji Kongo jangu zikawona enjure limi emini mamu mgenu Kuli mgenu zemeri rezona ziri wati Kandi mgenu za zemeri rezira haga mnonga Zireyo njera mosai zikuwa mpango Kongo njura yagwa nyingi vila kolo goku nye tabati bigweno kugu Sita hango hano kuhango Mumaka hana tisizo ni kishatu Tisizo ni kishatu Kutani kana nuku waka shatu Ezo kuhinga oku waka shatu Zazi tine njura nyingi Chajira firudi yora wali kuhinga nko kweri ingana Katu gami mwenu wawo ine firudi nkeji yona Ngeishi wawo tine mbibu wala wali itaga nkeji wa mbibu Deni nka wakozi ya wako wawo wala matoka hihi njira wenga Wine kubwala taha wakozi Kuno mkozi ne nkumi itano Katu gami mwenu urunaku Kunko muhembire Uruna kuni mkumita, numge aha, ntu ala hingwa kawa kozi mbakunyana. Nae tiyo, nae okubachi jia chichweka chesha. Wawo hahi njira, ntu hali homa nyue boni ireje. Wainge cho chichwekole honke shewu nkibiri. Sawa wawo hine shahi ibiri, ukazi vika, wazi kamera, ukashoka hii ngole honke shewu nkibiri. Eji mpa wawo hina haa, ntu hawa nira hoku hinga emondi. Tichireta ajisuga ngobo hina hine shewu ni ikumi ninga na zinga. Wabo ine nechichweka, orachihinga, soronga zori kwa hinga hantu, haji zirechi habo niire hali homa nyuku. Itaka erira chila kuwaribo niire, na ire mita kariri ka mgene rire mubraka, kukori kulebe ere. Eri itaka wali rewa jeri rali ni mu, itaka jaburaka ngeri. So ni jifu, ee, ni jori rali bo niire rire muka braka kariri na mgene. Irish potatoes are a food that is eaten by many people from different walks of life globally. It can be eaten as chips, mashed potatoes, crisps, potato bread, and many other ways as may be prepared from country to country and culture to culture. For this, the market for Irish potatoes is unbeatable and always available. Okay, Kandi ya bakari kawero shangesha ili na mituwa li tano. So za azibu ili wa sebeye tali honu kubii katu kwa zile katu kwa guze mbibu. Mbibu onda anda juguza esizo ni yawe boni ili ziri kutambura je esha he mwena we je mituwa na makunya ashatu. Mazi makatale hati tika angu hile kagumiri. Hati sofa na aza kusharu wezi mpaha no kuzita mosto. Tuo heje hii waleba ya saidi ya hivu. Zika manza za mera za heza kumera nkabona tuachia kubona banyagwanda. Vali jabara tugura hembibu. Suwa bonibu tola tola guzu. Maketi na ndaji hamu banyagwanda wabali jakunu wakatue sete wakatuale mwondi. Zazi talize mbibu zazi likuza kampara kunka kampara atitichi zichirikuza yuno kuzipacha watu kazi tuwa rakawa wale mkatale. Zena waha katale wakazi guzu. Fred Dixon is a consultant from IFDC. He's in charge of Irish potato growing in Rwanda district. His expert advice could help you widen your knowledge about the profitable and nutritious crop. Basic thing when you are when you want to either select a seed for planting a potato, you have to select a good variety of potatoes. The good variety which you can select, you have to get it from a reliable source or from a good farmer who is in charge of potatoes. So that potato should be well sprouted, which, is, which should be good for planting. What are the good varieties? The good varieties, they have characteristics. They, they, sh they, are, they should be able to germinate well. They should be free from pests and diseases. There are some signs of a good seed potato. It should be well sprouted, not infected with any disease. Varieties 
it depends on uh, on uh, certain areas or sub counties because we have different varieties. Like like here in our area, we have Chiniji variety, which is highly marketable because we sell them in Uganda. Then even in the local, it is, it is a good variety for farmers because it is good, it is sweet when you are eating. When we are planting potatoes, we have two different spacing for, for seed. We have 60 by 30 centimeters. Then for, for weya, we call it weya, for eating or selling, it is 75 by 30 centimeters. Because you want a big variety. Mazima mujo kuhinga, kuhinga kuli mama goba minji. Advice nyo enda waha, no kuronde mbivo. Ya abine vivira vete vivira javute na jovi kawo mwire govira babitari. Konga ya abine mbivo bahi, bahi inge mondi. Angu kube mondi ziri mugu lichi mwe chono. Iyo, rapa anjisi. Raba raba jino jendo bahe sente wa kue chivira o hingi. Ne chitweka chimwe chila kuhe, chila kuhe sembibo nyingi. From our previous episode, we gave you some of the vital information you need to know when growing bananas. Our case study was Mr. Kasaga, a prominent farmer from Hoima district. This week, we take a different twist with two different farmers. Mrs. Erinyu, a pig farmer from Kabiramaido, and Mrs. Turiantunga, an Irish potato farmer from Mukubutare, Rubanda district in western Uganda. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. The big ones, there are these big ones. Real huge, they can go for around 300,000. 300, 400, 500, 600. But now these small ones, 150, 200. Unlike other key agricultural enterprises, pig farming has experienced fundamental improvement in the number of pigs reared at both household and commercial levels over the last three decades in Uganda. From Kaviramaido district, Mrs. Ayinyu started her piggery farm after she realized the demand. She is a bachelor's holder who went into farming after giving up on hope of a white-collar job. Here, yeah, this is our piggery farm. Actually, we established it from a mill. We have a mill. We also have a garden of maize. But the output from the maize is what we take to the mill and then we grind. So from those profits, we decided to set up a piggery. Actually, I looked for a job for so many years and I decided to see that let, me, let us go into farming because we have the land and it was not being tilled. So we decided to go into farming and from farming, of course, there is also animal farming and also the plants. So we decided to do both. That is why we set up this. Instead of looking for a job, at least we can be able to sell the pigs, sell the maize and take our children also to school. Starting up a piggery farm in Uganda may require quite an affordable amount of capital. A farmer will need capital to construct the shelter, purchase the starting piglets, food and other basic items. What you need to start with, if you have, let me give an example of 100,000, because these piglets, we buy them at 100,000. So if you cannot put up a structure, at least if you have shade, where there's shade, and you can get for them these some plants, but I don't know how this plant is called in English. You can get and give them foodstuffs that remain, you can give them, but of course these ones, they are not like the local ones, they need a lot of care and hygiene. You have to keep cleaning where they are, you have to keep changing them, removing them from the sun, taking them to the shed, giving them water, 
looking after them like a human being would look after yourself. You have to be conscious to avoid diseases. When properly fed and maintained against diseases, pigs can grow up to over 50 kilograms. And this will also determine your market price. As a farmer, you need to know the right drugs to use if you are to save your pigs. If there's pain and strip, then there are those dewormers for pigs and cattle. Yeah. Then also for spraying, because we need to spray them as well. And then we also have need to buy the shampoos for cleaning here. Once in a while we bring them out and scrub here throughout. In some communities, pigs are seen as unhygienic and a taboo in the Islam faith. Because of this, their market could be limited in some areas. Nonetheless, a vast number of the population in Uganda value its meat as a delicacy. And for this, the prices will vary from season to season and location. Sometimes the prices are high, sometimes the prices are low. Like right now, the, there is not much profit. Maybe towards the end of the year, that is when you can find there are people who come to look for pigs around. The prices, it depends with the sizes. The big ones, there are these big ones, real huge, they can go for around 300,000. 300, 400, 500, 600. But now these small ones, 150, 200, 300, they depend, they go according to sizes. Aside from the market value, pigs have a cooperative advantage of communication in case of danger. They may not be able to attack the offender, but will signal the farmer for help. Because now, for example, when you came in, you saw them standing. That means they're used to us. They know us. That means if a strange person comes, they will alert you that there's someone who is strange in your farm. As you pass, they make noise. So they're like security sometimes to us. They can tell you somebody is in the compound. They make that noise. So it's interesting. Farming is interesting. It's a little, a little bit challenging when it comes to finances. At times they are sick and you don't have money to buy them drugs. Yeah, I would encourage you to go. Because it is your, what you're doing, earning out of a living. So you'll be, you'll be given, you'll have that gas of coming up to, to do it. In, and no one will wake you up that please wake up, your boss is waiting for you, you are the boss of yourself. <laughs>